Full Paragon presents an unabridged recording of... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, don't know what came over me then. Anyway, as part of the 1K sub-special that absolutely no one asked for, here is a dramatic reading of Kazuma Sato, Hero of Belzer, a fanfiction by yours truly. This is the first entry into what I have deemed the Cosma Files, documents left behind by the legendary hero. After his death, I found a jumbled collection of papers hidden amidst his possessions. After consulting with the other members of his estate, I have decided to publish these documents having edited them. It may surprise some to know that I can verify that this is indeed how the great man saw himself. As for the veracity of these files, I can only let wiser heads be the judge. N.S. My name is Sato Kazuma. You've probably heard about me. That shining paragon of justice. That intrepid hero. That man who stood fearlessly against the Devil King, alongside a goddess, a brave knight, and a powerful sorcerer, and saved the world. Well, I'm here to tell you that was all a damned lie. You see, in reality, I'm not some brave hero of legend. I'm a neat from Nagano who got in way over his head. Yes, yes, I can already hear it now. That can't be! Kazuma was such a hard-working adventurer who gave generously to the poor and needy! I know he helped defeat the Devil King and his generals! Well, I mean, yeah, I did, but not for the reasons that you think. Really, most of it was a misunderstanding, and if I'd had my way, I'd have spent my time at home, sleeping. Look, it's best if it just started at the beginning. It all started when I foolishly ventured forth from my nice, safe room in order to acquire a special item. Okay, it was just a toy I wanted so I could hole up in my neat sanctuary. Normally, I didn't go out, but I couldn't get this item delivered, so I had to go in person. I was on my way back home when I walked by a cute girl that I knew. Now, I'm sure you have this picture in your head of this kind, gentle Cosma who is a champion of fair maidens everywhere. So it might surprise you to know that the girl got a look of disgust on her face and tried to walk around me. She was wise to do so, or I might have tried something lewd. I had just about gotten past her when a car swerved towards us. In desperation, I tried to shove the girl out of my way so I could scramble to safety. Unfortunately, I misjudged and actually ended up throwing her out of the path of the vehicle and putting myself in danger. I had just enough time to wet myself. The car slammed into me, and I died. Oh, did I mention that I'm actually from another world? Well, it's true. I'm from Japan, and I was never meant to be here in this world. For most people, their story ends when they die. As for me, well, mine was just beginning. I woke up in a circle of light, sitting in a chair against the backdrop of the endless void. I blinked and looked around in shock, uncertain of just what was going on. Sato Kazuma, I must sadly inform you that you have died, a gentle voice said. I looked behind me as a beautiful woman in an elegant dark gown and a feathery white mantle walked up. She put a gentle hand at my shoulder, giving me a sad smile. A few moments ago, you passed on. You have my deepest condolences. I was trying to pay attention to the girl, honest, but she was just so cute and she was touching me. I struggled so hard to look at her face instead of her <clears throat> assets that tears came to my eyes. Oh, here, do not weep. Your death was not in vain, the girl said, handing me a lace hanky. I held it up to my nose immediately to sniff it and hid a lecherous grin. A girl's hanky score! I quickly dabbed at my eyes, pretending to be choked up. Oh, oh, that girl, was she? Thanks to you, she lived with barely a scratch, the girl said going to sit down across from me in a white chair with a desk beside it. She gave me a sweet, innocent smile, and I felt my heart pound in my chest. That was a smile a man could fight for. She really was gorgeous, a complete knockout. She had a little sister vibe about her, but I'd previously been into those sorts of fetishes. Of course, I had no little sister of my own, fortunately for them, or perhaps me, considering how things turned out. Well, at least that's something, I said, giving the girl my best smile to hide my horror at having done something selfless. Oh, where are my manners? I am the goddess, Eris. Normally, I do not handle such matters, but, well, my superior was busy and I've been having to fill in for her lately. Please, excuse my inexperience. No, no, it's fine. You're doing great, 
I assured her. Inwardly, I rejoiced, sweet, innocent, and totally naive, what I wouldn't have given to get her alone for a few minutes. Of course, that was assuming goddesses did not have a propensity toward smiting, which they uh, rather do as I would learn. Eris blushed and inclined her head. Thank you. No, normally, because of the life you led, you would simply be reincarnated. But, due to your selfless act, you are now permitted to gain entrance into heaven. Really? Do we get to, you know, enjoy all sorts of earthly pleasures? They're like uh, games or baths. I really wanted to ask if you could have sex in heaven. I was still a virgin, and I really hoped that I could achieve in death what I had failed to do in life. Uh, well, not quite, Eris admitted. You'll be given an eternity of rest to bask in the light and recline in the clouds while enjoying the company of others who have lived virtuous lives. That sounded incredibly tedious. Oh, are those the only options? To be reincarnated or to go to heaven? Maybe you could reincarnate me, I guess, but I would really like a little sister of my own this time. I was ever so lonely as a single child. Eris suddenly flushed. Oh, uh, please forgive me, but there is one other option, Eris hastily added. You see, many worlds across the universe are in peril. One such world is suffering under the oppression of a being known as the Devil King. Life is so terrible in that world that if something is not done soon, there will be no people left who wish to be reincarnated there. Another world? I asked, ready to agree to anything to avoid a boring afterlife in heaven. You mean like in an anime or light novel? Yes, people from your land are familiar with the idea, I believe. You would call it a fantasy world. You would retain all of your memories and be given a special sacred treasure or ability to aid you in battle. Please, I know you have the spirit of a hero within you. Sato Kazuma, will you agree to be a hero and save this world? I pretended to consider it, then said gravely, Yes, if a beautiful goddess asks this of me, I will attempt to stop the Gevel King, though it be a perilous journey. Inwardly, I was rubbing my hands in delight. This is what happens to harem protagonists! I'll get sent to this world, become a rich and famous adventurer, and get loads of chicks. Forget about this. Helping others and saving the world from the demon king, and all that sort of nonsense, I was going to take the easy life. Oh, thank you. Here, have a look at these items. Please select anything you choose, Eris said, conjuring them up a bunch of cards with pictures of items and abilities and their descriptions on them. I quickly spread them out, evaluating each carefully. I had to choose my item wisely. Eris's idea sounded like a lot of work, and also rather dangerous. Since I had just died, I decided that I was now deathly allergic to hard work and pain, and I should spend my life somewhere safe and comfortable, where no one would ever bother me. So, I was looking for an item that would allow me to acquire a few things. One, fantastic wealth. I wanted to be rich, baby, rolling in the dough without the need to ever work a day in my life. Not that I ever had. Two, it needed to get me a super hot girlfriend. I had died a virgin, and I aimed to rectify that. And third, I needed to make everyone think that I was a good person. Everyone in Japan that knew me called me Kazuma or Kazutrash for my cowardice and perversion. Not this time. Not that I was interested in changing, mind you. I just didn't like being called names. However, despite taking a long look, there was nothing that really suited my needs. I looked up and noticed that Eris was fidgeting slightly. Uh, Mr. Kazuma, would you mind hurrying up? This is taking quite a while, and I have a lot more souls to judge, and Lady Aqua might be upset if I took too long, Eris said. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just the weight of it all. Dying heroically and being sent off to fight the Devil King. It's a lot to take in, I said with a dramatic sigh. Eris blushed, looking twice as delightful as she did so. Oh! I'm sorry, it's okay, I understand. Really, I'm grateful to you. I wish I could do something more to help all my followers in Belzerg. Hmm, is it possible to ask for custom settings? Perhaps I can get something that will aid your worshippers, especially, I said, playing for time as my mind raced. 
Of course. I'd be happy to help you. I'm not quite as good at making items as Aqua, but mine do tend to be super lucky. Super lucky? Just what I needed. With a high luck stat, I could have women, wealth, and the adoration of the populace without ever having to do any actual work. Well then, I said, trying to choose my words carefully, I wish for the luckiest blessing that could possibly be bestowed on me, one that has great power against the Devil King and his servants. Maybe I could kill a few mooks and get famous and live off that for a while. One that will grant me great fortune and endear me to the followers of Eris. If this Eris was a popular god, getting in good with her followers was a surefire way to being adored. Okay, coming right up, Eris said. She stood, raising her hands up to the sky and sticking her tongue out of the corner of her mouth and biting it in a cute fashion. She suddenly paused, going pale. Oh no, that can't be right. Um, I'll need you to reword your wish, Mr. Kazuma. Huh? What's wrong with it? Drat, had she seen through my ploy to get rich and stay home? Oh, it's just that... Eris! An angry new voice called up from bed. What's the holdup? Come on, we're getting a backlog here. I've judged four souls in time. It's taken you for this one guy. Come on, chop chop. Sorry, Lady Aqua. Um, I just... What? I just wish for the luckiest possible blessing to be bestowed on me, which also has to have great power against the Devil King and his servants, and that will give me great fortune and bring comfort to the followers of Eris, and is also a super cute girl, I called to the voice, hoping to get my wish without further complications. I added the super cute girl cart just to be extra sure I got what I really wanted. Huh? Aqua's voice said. Oh, sure, fine. Come on, Eris, I showed you how to do this. And there, done, right. When I get back, you have better judged more souls. Well, Lady Aqua, Eris cried as a glow blueing circle enveloped us. That would mean his bonuses. I don't care. I approved it. Get this guy out of here already, Aqua ordered, and the sound of receding footsteps could be heard. I ought to kick you out for being so slow and lazy. <laughs> what kind of a goddess are you? I grinned. At last, the start of my popular phase. I spread my arms wide, ready to embrace a carefree future where I was stinking rich and able to lay about eating grapes from the hands of my new, incredibly hot... I felt a tugging sensation and found myself basking once more in the light of the sun. Next to me, I heard a startled gasp, and I grinned lecherously to myself. Perfect. Well, she could cry about it, but this woman was my bonus, and I could do whatever I wanted with her. I opened my eyes and found Eris looking stunned, standing next to me. Uh, are you my bonus, I asked. I wanted to make sure before doing something lewd, as goddesses have a reputation for smiting those who try to cop a feel. I... I guess I am, the girl said, sounding wounded. Tears welled up in her eyes. I can't believe it. I grinned and stepped forward, arms wide. Well, I'm sure we'll get to know each other very well then. I'm Sato Kazuma, but you can call me... Ooh. I had been about to say master, but then my bonus suddenly started crying and jumped into my arms. Okay, that was a good start. I could do without the waterworks, but... Hugs were a good starting place. Plus, I could feel her chest pressed against me. Her boobs then were smaller than I thought heiresses had been, but they were fine. She kicked me out, my bonus wailed. Lady Aqua kicked me out of the Divine Realm. What am I supposed to do? I've been a goddess for hundreds of years. All my followers, they're counting on me. How can she do this? I thought I was doing a good job. Is it because she's jealous I have more followers here in Belzerk? I thought she was better than that. I froze, just as my hand had been about to firmly grasp my bonuses rear. Carefully, I raised my hand, gently patting Eris on the back. Oh, you're actually the goddess Eris? Eris sniffed, stepping back and nodding. Yes, I know you didn't mean to, but the way you worded your wish, I was the perfect candidate. I'm the goddess of wealth and fortune, and I'm very popular here. Plus, my powers are incredibly effective against demons and the undead. And, um, you must have thought I was a cute girl too. Why did you specify that? It... Uh, well, you see, I, I spent much of my previous life alone, unloved, and alone. 
I had hoped to have a companion to join me in my quest. Um, someone to protect and treasure. Someone to share my burdens and my triumphs, I babbled. I had to think this through. Surely there was some way I could turn this to my advantage. I see. Well, I don't know what to do now, honestly, Hera sighed. I'll have to try to appeal to the other gods and goddesses and hope they'll let me back into the divine realm. Someone must take care of my followers. Well, I'd be happy to help you, of course, I said quickly. But it would be useful to have something like an endless sack of gold while we're here, you know. Perhaps we could just ford it up and ride this out, you know, until you can go back to the Divine Realm. Eris considered this, then nodded. Yes, it's best if I am not seen like this. If my followers realized I had been kicked out of the Divine Realm, they would lose all faith in me. Not only would I lose my powers, I wouldn't be able to protect them against the Devil King at all. Come, we're near the town of Axel, and I know just the place we can hide while I try to contact one of the other senior deities. Hiking up her skirts, Eris set off across the fields, and I had to jog to keep up with her. Despite the fact that I wore a tracksuit, I wasn't much of a runner, and I was soon puffing to keep up with Eris. Thankfully, she quickly grew overheated in her elaborate dress and headpiece, and I had to slow to a walk, so my dignity was saved before I threw up from overexertion. She led me to a house at the edge of a village, leading me along backways and dodging people as we went. Apparently, Eris was seriously concerned about making herself known. It's locked, but I should be able to pick the lock easily enough. I was a thief back when I was mortal, Eris explained. She reached out for the handle when the door suddenly jerked open. Inside was a girl who could have been Eris's twin, save for her small eyes and puffy cheeks, shorter hair, and boyishly slim figure. Though I would later learn, Eris's bulky dress concealed a similar build. She had the same silver hair and violet eyes, and aside from a large scar on her left cheek, her features were identical. Eris let out a startled squeak and jumped back while the other girl sagged against the door. No, no way. This can't be happening. I'm here, so how are you here? I should be asking you that, Eris cried, her hand on her heart. How, how is it even possible? I just had you on NPC mode since the judgments were taking so long. But normally I can control you with just part of my mind. Control? Control me? You are me, the girl babbled. This can't be happening. I can't have gotten kicked out of the Divine Realm. I looked back and forth between the two girls, frowning. Wait, what's happening? This, this is Chris. She's, um, well, my avatar here in Belzerg. I take her form sometimes to walk amongst my people, to listen to them and to know their thoughts and feelings. And at times, act unseen as their friend and helper, Eris explained. No, I'm not Chris. I'm Eris. You're the fake. Aqua must have created you when she granted this idiot's wish, Chris accused, pointing at me with a snarl of rage. Whoa, hey. Don't blame me. I'm innocent here, I protested. Let's calm down and sort this out. We just have to find a way to get Eris back to the Divine Realm. Problem solved. You can give me my cheat item and I'll get straight to that whole defeating the Devil King business. Well, I'm not your damn cheat item. And I'm not some cosmic plaything. I, I'm the real Eris. Eris shook her head. This is a mistake. I'll have to absorb you back into myself. You're not real. You're just a body that I begat to take out and have some fun sometimes. When I'm not around, you're just supposed to be set to NPC mode. I really don't know where this is coming from. I was getting real tired of this whole thing, so I sighed. Look, I'm sure there's an easy way to tell who the real heiress is, right? Some secret birthmark or something? Please be on the boobies. Please be on the boobies. Yes, Chris has none of my holy powers. She's just modeled after who I was when I was a mortal fighting the Devil King from hundreds of years ago, Eris said. She's just a simple thief, not a goddess. Ha! Shows what you know. I have all the powers of a real goddess, Chris declared. She raised one hand high above her head. Greater fortune! Nothing happened, and I rolled my eyes. Super, so you're the fake. Great, so just let Eris reabsorb you and we'll get on with it. Chris stood there, looking thunderstruck her eyes twitching slightly. Eris gave her a gentle smile and stepped forward. Don't worry, I'll just reabsorb your memories. As for the body, I suppose I'll just have to put it into stasis until I have need of it again. This is just an accident, man. Stay back, Chris cried. A dagger flashing into her hands. She pointed at Eris, and it wobbled slightly as she trembled. 
I... I'm warning you. Not one step closer. Ah, I don't want to die. I'm real. I'm not fake. This can't be hacking. This is some cruel joke from that blue-haired bitch, Aqua. Don't talk about my senior goddess that way, Eris gasped. Her expression grew grim. Well, if you won't listen to sense, I'll just have to do this the hard way. Steal! Eris held out her hand and gasped, as if she expected that to do something. But once again, nothing happened. Ha! Chris laughed maniacally, her eyes well. Ha! <laughs> You see, I'm not just an avatar, not just a puppet. I'm, I'm the real half of you, because I still have my thief skills. See, yes, you see, steal. A bag of coins appeared in Chris's open hand in a flash of light. What? No, give that back. That's my wallet, Eris cried, lunging forward. But Chris pointed the dagger at her nose, and Eris stopped. Yeah, I see how it is. You're just some faker, a creation for Aqua that she sent for this loser. Chris hissed. It's all his fault. I'm here anyway. Now get out of here, both of you. I I need to figure out a way to get back to the Divine Realm. Chris, please. I'm your creator, Eris said, tone shaky and her face pale. Just put down the dagger and... No, you're a fake. Leave me alone. Chris suddenly stepped back in the house and slammed the door. After a moment, I heard sobbing. Oh, well, that was unfortunate, I said, stepping close to Eris. I eyed her. She still had a polact expression. Her eyes wide and her mouth hanging open. But hey, you're a goddess. Let's just go to one of your shrines and have them help us out. Maybe some money, some food, a place to stay. We can... No! Eris cried, grabbing hold of me. We can't go to my followers. If they think that I've fallen from the divine realm, they'll abandon their faith in me. Not only would that leave them defenseless, but I could lose my powers, or even fade away completely without mortal faith to sustain me. Oh, I considered this. How could I spin it to my advantage? Well, perhaps we could come up with a cover story then. We could say I was your lover, for instance. Stories can become true, if you repeat them often enough, after all. Uh, thanks for trying to help, Cosma, but that won't work, Eris sighed. If a goddess take a mortal lover, we lose our powers and are kicked out of the divine realm for real. That would be even worse than our current situation. No, come, I know just what to do. We'll go to the local Axis Shrine, and I'll pray there to get in contact with Aqua, and I'll be able to go home. Great! And then I get my cheat item, I prompted. Yes, come. We'll have to stay out of sight, Eris said, and led me away from the houses, where Chris the Thief sobbing could still be heard. We made our way to the outskirts of the town, to a place near a river, where a dilapidated shrine with ramshackle buildings and a moss and lichen-covered statue of a goddess stood. Eris quickly knelt, and I stood there with my hands in my pockets, slightly bored. So far, my time in this fantasy world had involved far too much walking and not enough eating grapes from the hand of my magical girlfriend. After a moment or two, the statue suddenly changed, coming to life and taking on the form of a beautiful young woman with beautiful hair. Eris? What are you doing in Belzerk? You're supposed to be judging souls, not goofing off. Don't think I don't know about Chris. I don't mind so long as you get your work done. But this is going too far, the goddess who, I assume, had to be Aqua, said. Lady Aqua, don't you remember? You sent me here as Cosima's sacred blessing, Eris said. I beg you, let me back into the Divine Realm. I cannot return on my own. Huh? Aqua squinted at Eris, then at me. Oh, you mean that loser neat you were with? Hey, I resemble that remark. How'd that happen? Whatever, come on, let's get back to work. The aqua statue reached down and grabbed Eris' hand, giving it a tug. She grunted, pulling harder, causing Eris to wince and to have to stand up on her tiptoes. Uh, Lady Aqua? Eris gasped, clearly in pain now. Well, that's weird. Why can't I take you back? Aqua said. Wait, did you say I granted you as this moron's cheat item? Eris nodded, tears filling her eyes as she massaged her wrist. Wait, hold on. The statue suddenly reverted back to its former statue of carved stone, leaving Eris and I to sit and stare. It was several long minutes until Aqua came back, and when she did, she looked frantic. Oh crap, Eris, this is bad, really, really bad. I'm going to get into so much trouble if the other gods and goddesses find out. Aqua wailed, look, we can't send cheat items back to return. You have to defeat the Devil King. Then you'll both get a wish, and I can return you to the Divine Realm. What? Eris cried, jumping to her feet from where she'd been sitting in the shade. But, 
but Lady Aqua, I can't just come on. You're a goddess, right? So it should be super easy. Just go find the Devil King and blow him up or something. Then whatever you do, don't let anyone know it's you. No one can find out about this. Or else, look, I've got to go. Good luck. Eris jumped forward, reaching for the statue's hand. Aqua, no, please, I... But it was too late. The statue had reverted to stone once more, and Eris was left grabbing at a stone hand and sobbing. Well, that sucks, I muttered. I glanced at Eris and grimaced. I didn't even have a real cheat item. And as far as being a magical girlfriend went, apparently Eris would disappear if I had sex with her. So she was good for some fun at least once, but I'd probably best not try that for a while, as I'd likely need her help to get my neat sanctuary restored. Lady Aqua, please, I don't even have any money. We can't even become adventurers, Eris wailed. The door to the broken down shrine suddenly opened, surprising me, as I'd figured nothing but a few rats lived in that hovel. What's this? The sound of a girl in distress? Fear not, for the Axis Cult is here to help! A knockout blonde with an impressive set of fun bags cried as she sprang from the shrine. She was dressed in a blue nun outfit and had an air of manic energy about her. Eris paled and jerked back, forcing a smile on her face. Oh, no, um, don't mind us. We're just... What's this? Young lovers in distress? The nun asked. Well, never fear. We hold wedding ceremonies right here at the shrine. And unlike those filthy, money-grubbing heiress followers, we don't charge for all love is blessed in the access call. Oh, no, uh, we're not. That is, we're just friends, Eris said, going bright red and trying to back away from the rapidly approaching woman. Sighing, I stepped forward, blocking the nun's plaid. Sorry, we're just in a bit of a bind here, you see. My friend here is upset because she got kicked out by her family and I was orphaned in a terrible tragedy. Both of us are totally brokes, but we do have a deem of trying to defeat the Devil King and save the world. We came to this shrine to pray to Lady Aqua for a blessing that she might gift us with good force and, and some cold, hard cash. Or even a magic item. Really? She's single? The nun said, peering around me. <laughs> a cute lung thing like that? Why, if you're not careful, dear, someone's going to snap you up and eat you right up. I know. You should join the Axis Order. We're always looking for new priests. You could stay here with me. There's only one bed, so we'd have to share. But that's okay, because your big sis, Cecily, will take care of you. Er, no, actually, um... I've taken a vow of chastity, Eris stammered. I'm actually a priestess of the Eris Church and... <coughs> Eris and I both blinked, and Eris reached up, wiping the spit from her cheek, as Cecily, the lollycon nun, glared at both of us. What are a pair of filthy Eris followers doing here at my shrine? Get out of here! We don't need your kind coming around and mocking us! What? No! Aqua is senior to Eris. I just came to pay my respects, Eris said. She's, um, she's the senior goddess to Eris, you know. Cecily regarded Eris, a frown still on her face. Huh, I didn't think any of you skin-flint Eris types knew that. Well, I suppose you're not all bad if you at least recognize the superiority of our blessed Lady Aqua. Uh, yes, we just, um, we're going to become adventurers and defeat the Devil King, I said, giving Cecily my best smile. Surely you'd like to make a donation to us? And just think, one day you'll be able to say, it was the Axis Order who financed their operation, and everyone will know just how great the Axis Order is. <laughs> You're funny, kid. Well, all right. She is a cutie pie, and she does recognize how the Axis Order is superior to those miserly heiress stooges. I suppose I'll help you two out. Cecily took out a handful of coins and pressed them into Eris's hands. But if you ever feel like joining a real religious order, seek me out. Cecily leaned in close, pressing her lips to Eris's ear. And we don't require any of those silly vows of chastity. With that, Cecily drew back, blew Eris a kiss, and walked humming back to the Axis Shrine. Eris, for her part, looked shaken, so I put my arm around her. That way, I could snatch the cash from her before she spent it on something dumb like becoming an adventurer. I could think of much better things to do with it. However, she closed her hand around the coins before I could grab it, giving me a nervous smile. Well, um, that was different. Hakwa's followers are always very passionate. I really wish she'd stop telling them to bully me or that bit about... Oh, never mind. Come on. At least we have enough money to become adventurers now. 
I suppose, though perhaps we should consider spending the money another way, I suggested. Our funds are limited right now, so it might be wise to consider our options. Well, to get back home right now, my only option is to defeat the Devil King, Eris sighed. I did that once long ago, back when I was a mortal. I became a fair, famous hero and defeated a demon known as the Devil King here in Belzerg. When I died, Aqua recruited me to become her junior goddess, as a cult was already forming around me. Come on, let's go to the Adventurers Guild, Cosma. I promise, we'll defeat the Devil King together, somehow. Great. Now I had to find a way to weasel out of this before Eris started us on some insane quest. But, seeing as how she was currently my lunch ticket, I decided I'd play along. At least for now. I would come to regret that decision. Younger readers may be shocked to learn that the duality of Eris was not always canon to the church's liturgy, having been added to the canon at the First Council of Archenretia. But even those who recall that particular revelation may be shocked to learn just how the Divine Thief came into being. While I am not entirely certain as to what the theological ramifications of this are, suffice to say that after consulting with my sources, it does indeed appear to at least be plausible that Cosmos' claims in this area are indeed true. N.S. This has been the Full Paragon 1000 Sub Special Fan Fiction. <coughs> oh, sorry, just. Man. Anyway, thanks again for a thousand subs. I hope this was at least a little bit entertaining for you. And, um, I don't know if we'll ever do this again, but it was at least fun to try. Thanks again, and come back again soon for the real reason you're here more Konosuba Fantastic Days guides.